Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Kovald and in this video I'm going to be going over how to calculate ionization energies and make comparisons of uh, a system where we're assuming that we have a complete shielding versus not complete shielding, that is uh, penetration. So let's get into this. So this is going to be a, like a three parts, like there's, a, there's an A, B, and C part. So I'm going to start with part A and then we'll do part B and C. So in this problem, we're given a lithium atom where the two electrons, right, where two of its electrons are in the 1S shell and the third electron is in the 2S shell. And so for part A, we're asked to consider the lithium atom using the Bohr, the Bohr model. Suppose that the two 1s electrons lie completely beneath the outer, uh, outermost electron. What that means is that those electrons, we're going to assume for the time being that there's no penetration beyond the third, uh, uh, the third outermost electron. So the outermost electron is going to stay in the outermost area, and those two electrons are going to stay on the inside, they're never going to penetrate outer uh, beyond that uh, electron. So that means that we're going to assume here that there is complete shielding by the core electrons, by the two core electrons. Okay, let's continue. While the value of Z, which is nuclear charge, remember Z is the symbol for the number of protons in the nucleus or the atomic number. So atomic number is given the symbol Z, and atomic number refers to the number of protons. Therefore, Z is referring to the nuclear charge. So while the value of Z, the nuclear charge, for lithium is Z equals 3, because we have three protons in lithium, we might expect that the two inner electrons would shield completely the outermost electrons so that the outer electron only sees a nucleus with an effective uh, Z of equals one. So the Z, again, is the nuclear charge. And we're, we're going to assume that, therefore, the outer electron should only be feeling as if there was only one proton in the nucleus a Z of one. We call that the effective Z because even though there are three protons, two of the charges of uh, the charge of two protons is being canceled out by the two inner electrons. So effectively, the outermost electron is feeling a charge uh, in the nucleus of one proton. So that is, as it says here, uh, that is, or i.e., the positive three charge of the nucleus is partially canceled out by the two lower lying electrons. And then finally, it says, use the Bohr model to calculate the ionization energy of an electron in a 2s orbital with an effective Z, nuclear charge, value of one. Okay, so what do we do? Well, we need to use the equation for the change of energy of an atom um, uh, called the Rydberg formula. So here it looks like this. So we have the change in the energy of the atom is going to be equal to negative z squared. Again, z is the number of protons felt by the electron. So this is kind of like the attractive force. Um, so the uh, effective nuclear charge squared multiplied by 2.18 times 10 to the negative 19. Let me double check that. 18. So that's going to be multiplied by 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18. 
and uh, that's going to be joules multiplied by one over the final n, and I'll tell I'll explain what n is in a moment. Minus one over the initial n. So final minus the initial. And one more thing, these are squared. Okay, now this here comes from uh, the multiplication of the Planck's constant multiplied by C, which is the speed of light, multiplied by Rydberg constant. So that's where this number comes from, just FYI. And uh, the unit is in joules. Now, what is the NF and NI? Well, the N here is not referring to moles, even though little n uh, is, uh, does refer to moles in certain contexts like the, uh, the ideal gas law. But in this case, we're using little, the small lowercase l, oops, l uh, n, uh, at representing the uh, energy level that the electron is at. So remember, you have these quantum numbers, and the first quantum number is n. And the first quantum number refers to the energy level that the electron is in. The second one refers to the sublevel, or and so on. So this is for the energy level that the electron is in. So the NF is the final uh, energy level that the electron is in. And then NI is the initial energy level that the electron is in. And so we can use this equation to calculate an estimate of what the uh, ionization energy would be. Well, how do you, how is that? Well, think about what we're doing. What is ionization energy? Ionization energy is the change in the energy of the atom that is required, or I should say the energy required to remove the electron from the atom. Right, so you're removing the electron from whatever uh, energy level it's at, and you're just removing it clear away from the the uh, nucleus. So what you want to also keep in mind is remember the n values. If it's if this is our nucleus here, this would be n equals one, and then there would be n equals two and then n equals three, and so on. So as you, are, um, as you get farther from the nucleus, the n numbers increase. So closest to the nucleus, you have n equals one. And then as you get further, you go to n equals two, n equals three, and so on. And the energy levels get closer and closer together. Um, but the idea is that as you move away from the nucleus, your n numbers are increasing. So based on this, what would be our initial n value? What is the, what is the initial energy level that the electron starts in before we remove it? So if we go back here, it says use the Bohr model to calculate the ionization energy of an electron in what? The 2s. Well, this 2 in front of the S is our N number. That's the energy level. So that means we're starting in N equals 2. So that's going to be our N initial. So N, N sub I or N initial is going to be 2. Well, what's our final N? What's the final energy level that our electron is going to end up in? Well... If we understand that the energy levels, as you go up farther from the nucleus, the number of the energy level increases, n increases. Well, if you remove it completely from the atom, then these numbers are going to exponentially 
go higher until what? Until infinity, right? So you are basically removing the electron completely from the atom. So these n numbers are going to be infinity. So your final n is infin infinite. So you're removing it infinitely away from the nucleus, completely from the atom. So your initial energy level that you start with for the electron is 2. Your final energy level is infin infinity. So we can plug that into this. And we're assuming that Z here, we're told that the effective nuclear charge, we're going to assume that's going to be 1. One of the reasons why we can use this equation is because it works for one electron systems. And so here, if we assume uh, Z equals 1, we can, we can use that as a number 1 for the value. And again, remember, we're getting this number 1 because we're assuming for this part of the question that the two innermost electrons in the 1s sublevel or, or, or shell is completely shielding the two protons from or the nucleus from the one outermost electron. So we're assuming that the uh, electrons, the two inner electrons are canceling out two charges from the proton, leaving only one proton or two charges, two protons from the nucleus, leaving only one proton left. So if we understand all this, then we can calculate delta E, the ionization energy. So ionization energy is going to be equal to negative. And so Z squared, Z is 1, so that's going to be 1 squared multiplied by 2.18. Times 10 to the negative 18 joules. And then that's going to be multiplied by this. So our final n is infinity. So we'll put 1 over infinity. Oops. Let me rewrite this. 1 over infinity squared minus 1 over, and so the initial is 2, so I have 2 squared. Okay, now look at 1 over infinity. So as the denominator increases to larger, larger numbers, what happens to 1 over infinity or 1 over the denominator? Well, the larger the denominator gets, the more this approaches to zero. So if this goes to infinity or even infinity squared, then this is going to zero. So this is zero. So we can replace that with zero. So then this is going to be the change in the energy of the atom is equal to minus one. So one squared is one. 1 times 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 is the same thing. So 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules multiplied by, well, this is going to 0, and th this is going to 1 fourth. This is 1 over 2 squared is 1 fourth. Here, let me... Let me bring this down so I can have more room. Equals negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules. And then again, this is going to go to zero. So that's going to be zero minus one fourth. So this is negative one fourth. So here, when you multiply this together, so you're going to multiply negative 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules times the negative 1 fourth. The two negatives are going to cancel out. And then what you get is 5.5. So delta E 
which is the change, uh, the ionization energy is going to be equal to, what did I say, 5.5 5. 5 times 10 to the negative 19 joules of energy. So that would be the ionization energy if we're removing the electron from lithium atom from the second energy level to uh, removing it to away from the, the uh, nucleus completely. Okay, so this is part A. Let's go ahead and go ahead and do part B. Okay, so here we have part B. Let me just uh, state here that this here is joules per atom. So that's what we calculated here. So this is the energy required to remove one electron from the 2s uh, sublevel, right? That's the outermost electron. So when we remove the, the first valence electron from lithium per one atom, this is the energy required in joules. In part B, they're giving us the actual experimental ionization energy of lithium atom as 520 point, kilo, uh, point kilojoules per mole. So here we have joules per atom. They're giving us in kilojoules per mole, and they want us to convert this. They're asking how much is this energy on a per atom basis? So we want to convert this into joules per atom, right? So we're going to start with 520 kilojoules over one atom, so kilojoules per atom. And we're going to convert the kilojoules to joules, and we're going to convert atoms to moles. So let's go ahead and do this. So I'm going to start with kilojoules. I know that one kilojoule is equal to 1,000 joules because kilo is 1,000. So I'm going to put one kilojoule on the bottom and 1,000 joules on top. Uh, the reason I put kilojoules on the bottom is so that it cancels out with kilojoules on top. So that's going to cancel out. Now I have joules. So I'm done with the top. The top unit is what I want in joules. Now I'm going to convert the bottom one to moles. So here I have particles. I know that um, Avogadro's number tells me that 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles is equal to one mole. So if I have atoms, which is a particle on the bottom, I'm going to want particles on top for my conversion factor. So that means I'm going to put 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So atoms here is going to kiss off with atom there. And then on the bottom, I'm going to have one mole. Okay. And again, just to specify, we're talking about lithium. So we could say lithium atoms. Right, so lithium atoms, and we have a lithium atom here, right? So this could be per lithium atom or one mole of lithium, right? So then now I got mole of lithium here. So now I have joules over moles. I'm sorry. Um, I made a mistake here. Sorry about that. So I don't know why I put atom but this should be mole. So no big deal because now all I just need to do is switch this around here. So I knew something was strange. So I want moles to cancel. So now moles is gonna be on top here. So one mole of lithium, this is one mole of lithium. And then I'm going to have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd uh, lithium atoms on the bottom. So now the moles cancel out. 
And now I'm going to have atoms on the bottom, and that's going to give me my joules per atom that they want. So now all I need to do is multiply across the top, divide by the bottom, and when I do that, I get 8.64. So I get 8.64 times 10 to the what I get? 19? Yeah, 19. 19 joules per atom. And so that is the answer for part B. And you can look to see, well, to compare here. So this is what we calculated, assuming that we have complete shielding, right? If we have complete shielding, then the ionization energy is 5.5 .5 times 10 to the negative 19. But in reality, right, this is what we get by experiment. You'll notice that it takes more energy, right? The energy here is larger. The ionization energy per one atom is larger compared to uh, the assumed uh, the complete uh, the assumption under the assumption of a complete shielding of the nucleus by the core electrons. Okay, so let's go ahead to part C, the final part. Okay, here we are with part C. So for part C, oh, and by the way, I, I think uh, previously I didn't have the negative sign here, so this should be a negative 19. So what we see here is that the ionization energy for part B that was calculated experimentally is larger, obviously larger than that in part A. And so that brings us to part C where it says your answer in B should be significantly larger than your answer for A. That is the case. Now relax the assumption that Z equals 1. What that means is we're going to relax the assumption that we have a complete shielding of the nucleus by the core electrons. So we're going to relax that, keeping the rest of the model the same. That means we're assuming Bohr model. Uh, we're assuming that the electron here is in n equals 2. What value of z is required to be consistent with the experimental ionization energy? So this ionization energy here, if this is the actual ionization energy by experiment, then what does that tell us about the number for Z, the effective nuclear charge? So we need to calculate and find the effective nuclear charge using this value for our ionization energy. And then the second question is, what does this value for the effective nuclear charge tell you qualitatively about what is wrong with our crude model of lithium in part A. So let's first, let's do the calculation. So again, we're going to use the equation. The change in the energy of the atom is equal to minus Z squared times 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules times 1 over the final energy level squared minus 1 over the initial energy level squared. So everything is the same. We're removing the electron from the atom. So that means the initial energy level is 2 again because we're removing it from the 2s sublevel. And our final uh, energy level is infinity because we're removing it completely from the atom. And we're going to solve for Z. And we know the delta E, so we're going to plug in this ionization energy, joules per atom, into here. So when we do that, we get 8.64 times 10 to the negative 19 equals negative z, uh, z squared.
times 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules multiplied by 1 over infinity squared minus 1 over 2 squared. So now we simplify everything. So I'm going to continue down here. So I have 8.64 times 10 to the negative 19. And I should have joules here. And that's joules equals negative z squared times. And then what I'm going to end up having, again, is I'm going to have 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18 joules times 1 over infinity squared. This is going to be 0, right? And then we're going to have minus 1 over 4. So negative 1 over 4 plus 0 is just negative 1 over 4. So the negative here and the negative here are going to cancel out. So I'm going to multiply these together, right? And when I do that, I get, again, this is going to be equal 8.64 times 10 to the negative 19. Joules is equal to z squared multiplied by 5.5 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Okay. So now all I need to do is divide both sides by this to get z squared by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So divide this by 5.5 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Divide this by 5.5 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So this cancels out. So I'm going to have z squared equal to the division of this. And when I divide that, I get 1.58. So z, oops. z squared is equal to 1.5844. And then I just square root both sides. And so then z ends up equaling 1.5844. So that is the actual effective nuclear charge felt by the electron in the lithium atom when you're the, uh, the valence electron in the 2s. So what is that telling us? We assumed in A, in part A, we assumed O. So the two electrons were, must be shielding. We're assuming they're shielding completely. They're going to stay beneath the 2s energy level and they're going to stay in uh, in beneath that level right um, and so therefore the two electrons would effectively shield the nucleus so since we have two negative charges on the inside that would effectively eliminate the two positive charges in the nucleus of which there are three leaving only one charge left to be felt by the outer electron, right? But it, we this tells us that the effective nuclear charge felt by the outermost electron is 1.25, more than one. So that means that the electron is actually feeling a much, uh, not a much, but a larger effective charge than was assumed in part A. Well, what does that mean? It means that the inner electrons are not shielding the uh, nucleus uh, perfectly. What does that mean? It means that the inner electrons are penetrating the shield, right? So the inner electrons, or I should, 
the uh, what I should say is that the outer electron is penetrating the shield of the inner electrons, right? So that means that the the 2s orbital, 2s orbital, the 2s electron is able to go into or past the shield closer to the nucleus, thus feeling a greater charge. So that's why you have a greater effective nuclear charge um, based on, uh, contrary to what we would, uh, based on our assumption. So that is the problem with our model in, in uh, part A. So I hope uh, that you enjoyed this video. I hope this was clear and this helped you understand uh, what is at issue here with the ionization energy. If it did, if you enjoyed this video, then by all means, like the video, share the video, hit that button, the, the, the like button somewhere. Also, do me a favor, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification bell. When you do, make sure you click all so you can be notified by all the videos I put out. And finally, put a comment down below in the comment section down there, right down there. And let me know what you think. Ask me questions. I would love to hear from you. If you have a question or a problem you need help with, or if you have a topic you would like me to cover, put that down below. I would like to do that for you. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.